Hi, welcome to part 5 of our tutorial series on Jack's RS RESTful web services. Today we're going to look at how we can uh, tailor the response message to the client. First of all, we'll look at how we can use the accept request header in order to specify the content type. So maybe the client requires JSON or requires XML. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is how we can change the response status code. So perhaps we want to return a 404 or some uh, HTTP response error code. And finally, we shall have a look at how we can return an error message in the response. So without further ado, let's get to the code. So in the last uh, episode, we implemented a service that produces XML and another one that produces JSON. And we did this by specifying a path URI template. So in our REST client, we can provide a URL including XML and it returns XML. Or if we specify JSON, we get the JSON back. Now, this is not necessarily the best way to do it. There is an alternative. I think it's cleaner. Uh, first of all, we just specify the, the resource and we add a header, the accept header. In this case, accept text XML. Now we have to implement the service, so let's go back to the code. And all we have to do is remove the path and deploy, and we should be good to go. So now we have an XML in the response. Or we can say application JSON and the magic of JAXRS selects the JSON because here this specifies that it produces JSON and this specifies that it produces XML. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is how we can modify the response. So we're going to implement a new get method. And the path for this test will be, uh, it's called status or something like that, it's good enough. Public response, uh, it's Jack's RS response. Uh, I can't get response. Now, we are going to tell it to build a, we have a bunch of options, pre-configured options, no content, not modifiable, okay. Uh, let's just take them out. Not modified and build return. Okay, now let's deploy our service and we're going to call URL status 304 not modified. That's great. Now obviously we wouldn't have a service that just returns an error message, but you get the idea. Um, so let's just come out of these on this method at the moment. We're going to look at our get employees by name, which has a query parameter of the sort by. Um, just going to deploy changes. Now if I don't provide the sort by parameter, we get null. Yeah. Uh, if I provide the sort by, also by name, it specifies name. So we're interested in how we'd handle uh, if this value comes in null. Let's just imagine we do we quota something like uh, sorted by equals uh, dot equals dot equals xxx. And do something here. Do something. So let's deploy our service. And now, what happens when we pass null? We're going to get our null pointer exception, which gives a 500 internal server error. We get a null pointer exception because this is null. One way we can handle this is we can uh, close null. We can throw a new exception, new web app exception, and pass it back some response. So response dot status. Give it a status state dot, and let's say that's a bad request. You pass now in, it's a bad request, and we can also add 
headers, header, and pass back some header value. Error message um, sort by um, is mandatory. Okay, something like that. Uh, So what we've done here, we've created a web application exception. We are uh, creating a response, telling it to have a badge request status code, and passing back a an error message in the response headers. Let's run this in the server. Now we're going to pass in null. We don't pass a query parameter. We get the 400 badge request, and we have a error, x error message. So by param is mandatory. So uh, that concludes a basic tutorial on how to tailor responses. Tune in for the next episode. Thanks for watching.